Next, we have Carnegie Mellon University with Opus, connecting parents and children with the power of story. Um, so, hi everybody. Uh, we are Carne Carnegie Mellon University School of Design. And but my name is Dixon, and these are my teammates, Sarah and Ji Young. Um, we were thinking we might start with a little bit of audience participation. So, um, with a show of hands, how many people out here are parents? All right, so how many of you have asked your children the question, how was your day, and gotten back some sort of answer that sounded like, okay. <laughs> All right, keep your hands up. So for everybody that's left, how many of you are guilty of giving your parents this answer? Okay, so this is the problem we're trying to solve, that um, maybe rich conversation doesn't arise from questions like, how was your day? They come about when parents have a bit more information to ask a more specific question about a child's experience. So we were thinking, how can we deliver this, uh, deliver this information to parents? And this is how we're going to do it. This is Opus, and it's uh, augmented reality magnifying glass and an e-paper, a bound e-paper storybook. And uh, what it can do is it can take the experiences the child has during the day and kind of slip them into story time later at night. And this is how we uh, arrived at our, uh, at our final uh, solution. It's, um, we started out with interviews, uh, both individual and group, and then we went on to do some generative workshops. And then the insights from these, we generated almost 100 concepts. And then with our users, we narrowed them down to just a few to prototype, and then we came back uh, to our users again for validation. And throughout this entire process, um, we came up with, I think, our three key insights. So insight number one is the existence of our problem, that um, how is your day doesn't actually generate a rich conversation. And if there's only some way we could give parents a bit more information so they could ask something specific about their child's experience. Um, insight number two is that maybe story time is actually a great place to deliver this information because story time is a ritual that many families have almost daily. And within story time, um, conversation is already a natural mode of interaction between parent and children. So it's not a big step to try to augment story time a little to encourage parents and children to talk a little bit more about themselves or ask a bit more about each other. And uh, number three was that some of the parents we, we were talking to were a bit concerned about technology coming in between them and their kids. So we found that when we, um, when we wrapped up our information in the familiar vehicle of a story and a familiar f uh, physical form of a story book, they suddenly became a lot more comfortable using our technology. Our system is a, oh, sorry. Our system is a symbiosis between three actors. Stories are co-created with input that is one-third from the child, one-third from the parent, and one-third from the Opus framework. For this to work, the child explores their day with a magnifying glass. These, their discoveries are archived in the story for, for later use. Um, the Opus framework relies heavily on databases for storytelling structure, for prose and illustration style, as well as child education related material or research. And finally, the parent joins the child with Opus to imagine these stories. Here is our concept video. So she uses Opus, an augmented storybook and magnifying glass that helps parent and child share experiences through the power of story. While her mother is at work, the daughter Riley discovers things with the magnifying glass. How are you guys today? She finds things that interests her. It's beautiful. And she finds things that she wants to remember. Each time Riley focuses the magnifying glass on an object, it comes alive and talks to her. Hello, Riley. My name is George. Do you know who I am? You're a ball? Yes, I am a tennis ball. I bounce here and bounce there. Let's go on an adventure together. Look for me in the book later. Later that night, story time begins. Opus actively listens to Jill and Riley's conversation. Are you ready for the story? Yep. Once upon a time, there was a... What was there, Riley? A girl. And that girl's name was... What was her name? Me, Riley. Riley lived with her... Who did she live with? Teddy. And Riley and Teddy lived on a farm. They were best friends. No. 
What do you mean, no? You love teddy bears. We are enemies now. Oh, I see. Riley and Teddy were enemies. Oh, what's that? It's a tennis ball. I found it today. Oh, really? Have you played tennis before? Do you want to try? Yeah. Let's plan to do that for the weekend. Riley and Teddy were rival tennis players, and this is their story. Later, the story is done and Riley has gone to sleep. Jill sets up the next story with Opus. Opus? Hello, Jill. Would you like to talk about the next story? Yeah, I noticed that Riley's very concerned about winning. That is fairly common for her age. The possible solution is to emphasize the qualities that helped her get there, not the result itself. Should we add that in for the next time? Good to know. That sounds fantastic. Great. I'll save that. Do you want to review the summary? No, I will read it for the first time with Riley. Now that Jill has Opus, story time has taken on new meaning. With Opus, the telling of each new story is a chance for parents to teach, for children to reflect, and a chance for both of them to bond. So you just saw a day in the life with Opus. And the experience of Opus um, can be characterized into five steps. Let me take you each step in more detail. First is discover. The child uses the magnifying glass to discover the world around her. And as a magnifying glass recognizes the chosen object, it initiates a conversation through interactive AR characters to keep the child engaged in the activity. Second is co-create. During story time, parent and child can co-create stories by completing unfinished narratives um, by un Narratives. <laughs> this feature was modeled after an actual observed behavior from parents when they make up stories for their children. And also, Opus uses a three-act story structure, setup, confrontation, and resolution to combine these seemingly random elements into one cohesive narrative. Third is experience. Opus is actively listening to the conversation between parent and child and creating the next content in real time. So although Opus is not contributing vocally, the story is still told by three actors, child, parent, and Opus. And fourth is share and learn. The previously captured elements appear in the story um, to to become a starting point for conversation, allowing parents to ask more engaging questions to find further, further insights into the child's experiences. And last is reflect and plan. Many of the parents that we interviewed with wanted to learn more about the child's experiences and interests so they can help them better. So the, the, so the act of planning the story together with Opus is a great opportunity for parents to learn about the empirical research behind the plot points and also to carry that knowledge into real life. And also here is where parents can review content and select narrative, illustration, author styles, and et cetera. So up to this point, we've only discussed Opus within an immediate family environment involving parent and child. But we envision Opus to be in a bigger context. So what if extended family members, aunts, grandparents, uncles, can start contributing in storytelling? It will be a great way to connect distant family members and also an opportunity for parents to teach children about family rules and values. So, for us, the biggest takeaway from this project was a renewed respect for storytelling. And this respect is why we've created Opus, a system that enhances the ritual of story time and also helps families to connect with one another through power of storytelling. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello. Th Thanks. Um, so congratulations on your project. Uh, I, I will say that insights that you guys led off with um, I thought were really powerful and succinct and really clear, clear in their presentation. And it, it, the quality of your process and your research really showed through and I think set you up for a lot of success later on, right? Um, as you gave this presentation, like I, I started wondering, like why would anybody want to go through their day collecting this information? And then when you showed the magnifying glass actually personifying things in the world around, I thought,
thought that was a brilliant solution to actually making somebody want to do that, to giving some reward in using the project product. Um, one thing I did wonder, though, is that like I, I thought that there was a little bit of ambiguity about whether or not the product was about co-creating a new story with the child or letting them reconstruct their day in story-like form, right? And those two aren't necessarily the same thing. Like, they would suggest different prompts, a different UX for that storybook, right? And that was one question I had is, like, had you thought about the UX of that storybook and how it would prompt you? Because one thing that's interesting about conversational UI is that the tenor of the conversation, the content of the conversation actually becomes UX, right? The words that you use, the blanks that are there, and that kind of th stuff. Um, so I'm wondering if you guys thought about what that, what that interaction was like. Um, I think it's, um, we actually only presented one, uh, one scenario in this book, but then when we were designing it, we were thinking there were a few levels of possibility. Um, some parents might actually uh, feel really tired and they don't want to to like make a story, so then the book would just write it all for them. Um, to answer your question, um, um, I think that uh, it's, it's more about uh, creating a new story rather than talking about the child's day. Um, and the, the tenor or the, the language in the book uh, is actually set up at the end of the book, what you could see when the parent was talking to the book. She could actually choose illustrator style and uh, kind of writer style. Um, and those will kind of dictate how, like you could choose the Dr. Seuss version of the book, and then it would talk like Dr. Seuss, and uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, beautiful, amazing presentation, and uh, I, I, I love the premise. Um, and I agree with Cliff that the way you, you set up those initial, uh, this kind of, the strategy, the principles, um, was really strong, so strong, in fact, that um, as a parent, I kind of immediately wanted it to be a particular thing. Um, and I don't know if this is useful to state, but um, I the, the illustration part kind of threw me in the actual sort of creation of the story. Because I think even if it were, now I'm just kind of brainstorming with you, but like, even if there were just something, um, an aid for parents, you, you always have to come up with like a new and better story. <laughs> Um, at bedtime, um, and I think something that would aid a parent that also, again, sort of um, brings the child into the story, re revealing something about his or her day was so powerful. You had me kind of there. And then, again, I mean, I love the ambition of bringing in the illustration and the book, but it, it prob I think it would be successful even um, with less. And, uh, but Again, for, for the, the spirit of this project, um, I understand the desire to sort of keep <laughs> keep going. I mean, I think that that was the case with a couple other projects that we saw as well. But uh, I hope I hope you continue with this, and I think that there is something really valuable um, that probably would be less work even that could come out of this. So I totally identify with the problem statement as it was both my daughters are actually in the audience, future future designers, and every single day is the, how did how was your day? <laughs> and the nothing. Um, <laughs> except the uh, output of their creativity, and that's where we actually have great conversations. And yesterday, my younger daughter was showing me her Sims uh, basement house that she had De you know, designed and um, it was, you know, third floor of her 15th house that she's built and she was imagining the persona of the person who lived there and decorating it appropriately for this particular individual. And, was, and it, it reminded me of the exactly what you're doing, which is the point is to engage the parents in a conversation through creativity and how can a conversational assistant sort of bring magic to that. So it reminds me a little bit of the last project we saw in terms of, you know, just immediately providing the sort of starting points for a conversation and stimulating that with provocation and all sorts of things. I think there's so many levels I could talk about your project. I could go on for like 20 minutes, but um, I'll stop there. But uh, I really liked it and some, some really uh, very deep and thoughtful thinking about the future of um, sort of guided co-creation. And um, I, I really enjoyed it. Thanks.
Okay. Okay. That'll be too long. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you.